<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Behave. Ha! That's my show's title. How is your dog behaving these days? Or your cat, especially as we emerge from this pandemic. Hey guys, I want you to know you're looking for answers to deal with your pet's behavior issues. You just won the pet lottery today. That's because on our show, we have not one, but two of arguably the world's top experts on pet behavior. This possum couple operates veterinary behavior consultations and team education in animal behavior. I think they're going to behave on the show, but there's new promises. So please give pause and applause to licensed veterinary technician, Debbie Martin, and her hubby, veterinarian dr kenneth martin welcome to the show debbie and dr ken hey thank you for having us yeah it's great to be here are you nervous oh, a little bit always <laughs> i promise it's better than going to the dentist hey guys we're going to learn a little bit about some things about why cats and dogs do what they do and what we can do about it after we pay for this show so you know the drill sit and stay we'll be right back time for a pause Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave, we'll be right back. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here with some great news. When you plan to travel with your pup or treat them to fun times outdoors, our friends at Carlson Pet Products have mutts have products. Carlson Pet Products offers an array of pet pens, they're lightweight foldable and tucked nicely in a carry bag for storage. You can also add an attachable canopy to create a shaded outdoor oasis for your dog. Nice. So dash over to carlsonpetproducts.com today and pick the perfect pet pen for your canine pal. Get 25% off your order plus free shipping using the promo code PETLIFE at carlsonpetproducts.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guests today are Debbie and Dr. Ken Martin. Now, she's a licensed veterinary technician specializing in animal behavior. There's a lot of Vanna White initials after her name. And he's a board certified veterinary behaviorist. Again, lots of initials, alphabet soup after his name. But together, they operate veterinary behavior consultations and team education in animal behavior. Oh, I got to take another breath here. Whew. And they are both fear-free certified elite professionals with fear-free pets. That's a fancy way of saying they have found many, many ways to get really good information in our hands about our cats and dogs. And they do it on different platforms. But to start the show, guys, I just have one question. Do your own pets behave? Oh, I hear nods, but this is radio. Come on. <laughs> come on. My pets behave, but his doesn't. Oh, <laughs> snap. Okay. Uh, let's at, at 13, if she can do whatever she wants. At 13. Who is your 13-year-old? Ileana, the Malinois that's on uh, Puppy Star Right. So she's on the cover. She's been around a long time. So, yep, yep. She's spoiled right now. I like that. I like that. What would you describe her personality? Uh, she's a thinker. She sits back and she'll watch and she's thinking and, you know, kind of 
her little brains, you know, spinning in the background of how she, maybe how she can, uh, you know, get, <laughs> get into mischief and those things. So, yeah. You use the uh, politically correct term thinker. I'm thinking she's plotting. <laughs> <laughs> she's also a great babysitter. We have a new puppy in the house and she and Chip have developed a wonderful relationship together. And it's really fun and fun to watch them play and right. interact with each other. He's learning a lot about appropriate dog interactions from her. It gives her something to do. <laughs> He's young. What kind of dog is uh, Chip and uh, how old is he? Chip is a border terrier. <laughs> My apologies. Okay. Yeah, exactly. 18 weeks old today. Really? So four and a half months. So Debbie, what's his personality like? We know it's just, it's like a it's wonderful, right? It's clay right now, you know. Yeah. I jokingly say that the first year of a puppy's life or a kitten's life, I call that the wonder year because you wonder where your sanity went. So <laughs> you guys are behavior experts. Debbie, how's your sanity going with Chip? Chip has been a really good puppy, actually. I am surprised. Really? We're, we're pretty stressed. It's been 12 years since we've had a puppy in the house. Wow. We, we wrote a book on puppy development and raising puppies. but I think you're going to have a new book coming out after this. Yeah, I was quite nervous about uh, sleepless nights. And we have lucked out with Chip. He has slept through the night every night. Does he sleep in your room? He does. Yeah. Now, I've heard this, and you guys are the experts, that sometimes it's good to have the pup in the room, but maybe elevated their platform so they can actually see your bed. Have you heard of that, where it's on a sturdy structure so that their crate or whatever they're in is about the same level as your bed? Have you heard of that? That's what some dog trainers are doing. There's pros and cons, right? Okay. I mean, puppies need to learn independence, so they need to learn to like be out of your sight. We can't always be with them, right? Like with the pandemic. Right. Uh, we're home all the time uh, a lot. And so, I mean, that's great that you're there to really nurture, be there for all their needs and everything else. But sometimes they need to learn independence too. So I think being able to be in your absence sometimes while we are home can be really beneficial. So the puppy slept in the crate, which is right okay. next to the side of the bed on Debbie's side, of course. And, uh, you know, and, and we've actually had times where the puppy has slept in bed with us too okay. as well. So, you know, and, and slept through the night, did well. How big is Chip? Chip is 13 pounds right now. Oh, okay. All right. And with your other dog, how, how she's, she's bigger. <laughs> is she About on your bed too? Yeah. 55. 55 pounds. Okay. Does she carve out a spot on the bed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right between the two of us. That's right. And she even has her own pillow. Well, she's 13. She's earned it. Yeah. She's a little human. <laughs> Chip has decided it's <laughs> his pillow. <laughs> Oh, Chip's probably going to have a pillow party. <laughs> Do you have any other pets? Not right now, no. No, okay. unfortunately, all our dogs were senior and they passed away within the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So okay. she's the last one. And we were, you know, it's hard getting a pandemic puppy, right? You know, maybe not the best time to get a puppy, although they're, it might be the best time to get a puppy because we're home with them all the time. Oh, we yeah. can spend a lot of time with them. So, yeah, we were waiting and uh, then started looking um, and thought, well, you know, hopefully this pandemic is coming to an end and life's got to go on. And mm -hmm. Well, there's a term, you know, there's the term pandemic pup and pandemic cat. And there's the pros and cons. And maybe you can help us out a little bit. Everybody is starting to merge from the pandemic. Some people are going back to their jobs. Some people are still working from home, but they got to have time where they can focus and do their job. What's been the good and the bad and the surprising? What kind of tips can you guys offer people as we help our pets transition that we're basically Velcro pets, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got some good tips? Well, there's kind of two sides to that. I think there's, there's a side of, okay, we're going to start going out and doing more things and maybe the animals are going to be left home alone again or for the first time. So there's that part. Then there's also the part of maybe they haven't had much experience the past year, year and a half being out and about. And now we're planning to take our animals out and about again. And even if they had done well before the pandemic, just like us, I think that we're out of practice. It feels a little overwhelming sometimes. Uh, and we have to give the same consideration to our pets that even though they a year and a half ago, they may have done really well with going to a restaurant with you. It might not go as well now. Let's talk about that part because I have a certified therapy pet, Kona. 
aka Ice Cream Kona. And she's a terrier mix. And she is the most intuitive dog I've ever met. She seems to know instinctively how to raise up energy, how to lower energy when meeting a new dog, a person, whatever. And it, we were about six months into the pandemic. And my sister walked in our door, mask, of course. And I had never heard Kona. She did that. <laughs> And she was like, made my sister, who's an auditor, so she's not real animated, feel like she was like a rock star. And I just, I saw a surprise. And then we would take walks and Kona would see a dog or another person and be like, oh, can we go say hi? So let's talk about that part. The people in your house and you're taking new walks to new places. Who wants to do the dogs and pets transitioning from in the house? And who wants to do out and about? We've got two experts. You want to do house? I'll do out and about. Okay. All right. So for $200, Dr. Ken. No, mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dr. Ken, help us help our pets when visitors come or, you know, things in the house because we need them to be strong, you know, individuals and not full of stress. The most, probably the most important thing that we can do with, with our pets is that they have positive associations with people coming over. I mean, some people have, with, with the pandemic, we have been more isolated. We, have, we aren't having company come over. We aren't having visitors come over. And then there's developmental periods that dogs go through too as well. And they're not really emotionally mature, socially mature until about two to three for dogs, maybe wow. three to four for a cat. So after that time, it's a lot easier for them. I think you have more stable temperament after that time. But before that time, there's still a lot of learning that goes on, a lot yeah. of learning history that happens. But it's the most important thing is that we make the introductions positive. And so freshening it up on some obedience could help. Yeah. So, all right, my sister walks in and, and Kona's squealing like a pig. What's the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do? So obviously you don't want to use any punishment. Reprimands, corrections, those things are more likely to induce fear, anxiety, and stress and not really wanted. Yes, you can certainly suppress behavior with correction, but it's not in your pet's best interest. Uh, we don't recommend it. So instead of doing that, basically, typically we'd introduce the dog to the person on leash okay. where we work on some basic cues, just sit down, use treats, reinforce okay. operant behaviors that we like, the dog sitting, the dog lying down, any other known behavior and reward calm behavior. The okay. other thing that can be really helpful is that we have visitors not being too exciting because if the visitor is coming over and they have treats and they're like, puppy, 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 and all, you know, they're, you're like, no, they're going to lose their mind. They're going to be jumping all over them. Right. And, and right. it really, I guess, depends on who the visitor is because some people won't mind the dog being jumped on. Although some people might argue that's bad manners. Other people may not care. So you got to also pick your visitors too, who are coming over and say, look, my dog may jump on you. Are you okay with that? And if that's okay, and it's not a problem for the owner, it's not really a problem for us. My dog jumps on me. I like that. I taught that behavior. I reinforced that behavior. So it just depends on what you want, what your expectations are for your dog. But it's only a behavioral problem if the owner thinks it's a behavioral problem. Okay. Well, let's go to the feline side. I have Casey, Rusty, and Mikey. Mikey likes to headbutt everybody and groom their head. <laughs> and uh, Rusty wants to show off and jump from one end of the cat tree to the other through a hoop because, you know, he's a circus cat. But Casey is very socialized, has been to 13 states by car and by plane, a lot wow. of behavior conferences, pet first aid, you know, things that I teach. And he'll just come right up like the repairman. He wanted to have a tool belt. And fortunately, the dude like cats. I say real men love cats. So what they're a little bit harder to see signs of stress in cats. So what what are we looking out for and what's the best way for a cat that seems to be pretty socialized inside the house when, uh-oh, new people came in? Yeah, a lot of times with cats, it, it, the person who's less interested in the cat, they're not offering eye contact. They're ignoring the cat's going to be more interested in. Okay. So they're more likely to socially approach and uh, because that person's not looking at them or staring at them or there's no social pressure um, that's placed wow. on the, the cat during that time. So some cats will be much more affectionate. They will be much more friendly. The biggest thing to, to worry about, which sometimes people accept as normal in cats, where it's, but it's not. It's problematic. And if a dog did the same thing that a cat did and ran away and hid underneath the bed when visitors came over, most dog owners would address that. A lot of yeah. cat owners think that's normal. That's a good point. Yeah. And it's not. No. You know, it's a sign of fear or anxiety, stress. And we want to try to address that problem. Okay. All right. We've got from the inside. Now we're going to hang out with Miss Outside. So we went about four months ago. We took the dogs 
to a pet friendly place in Texoma, rented a, a nice place, took them on lots of walks. And it was really nice for all of us to get a new venue. But I know RV parks are crazily crowded. And some of the people RVing have no idea how to camp, don't know the social etiquette for RVers. There's people wanting to take their pets now to the hotel, back to the outdoor cafes. Take it away, Debbie Martin. Yeah. Traveling with pets can be stressful, yeah, but for- also very enriching and fun too. Yeah. So the memories that you can share, just take some planning, you know, certainly making sure that you've got all their medical records information with you. So in case there is an emergency and you need to get care somewhere else, that you have that information easily accessible. Make sure that you're bringing their food regular food that they eat, um, yeah. otherwise they might get an upset tummy. It also allows us to know if uh, if they are really stressed, a lot of dogs and cats will kind of go off their food. Oh, And okay. so it gives us information if we're feeding the same food that they've always enjoyed and they stop eating that, then it tells us that something's up, whether it be maybe they got into something or they're feeling a little anxious or nervous about the whole situation. So, uh, and then going out and about making sure that we have microchips and also yes. collars that have identification. I prefer collars that have it embroidered in instead of tags on it, just especially if we're using any type of confinement, we wouldn't want the tags to get caught on something like a crate. I have all of mine embroidered. Awesome. Yeah. And I like it because somebody would see them and say, Kona. And Kona's like, how do you know my name? <laughs> exactly. Right? Thank you for that. Exactly. So I, I did a good depth. Well, when they're out and about and, and all that, I also bring bottled water. I never give my pets any water from a hotel, from a, any place, because I don't like to have doggy diarrhea. or giardia. Exactly. What the water that they're used to is probably the best. Right. You know, certainly bottled water. We're going to know it's there's no impurities, hopefully in it. Speaking of water, I think it's you know, you probably know this too. In Texas, the algae in the water is the issue. Yeah. And so water activities are something that you have to be very careful with this summer and all the time. But you know, certainly them drinking water or salt water. I don't know if you've ever had that experience with your pet. One of my dogs was on the original SoCal surf dog team. So okay. I was surfing with my dog, Cleo. Salt water doesn't go well. <laughs> we made sure all the dogs had plenty of water, big bowls, and especially the labs were like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And so fortunately, little doggy cabanas, everything. But you're right, because salt water would just dehydrate them, right? It does. And it can cause really bad diarrhea. Also, oh, okay. it dehydrates them further. The opposite end of that, though, too, is if they're drinking too much water, oh. uh, they can actually have what's called water intoxication, where wow. it's really an electrolyte imbalance. Their electrolytes get too low. It's, uh-huh. It happens to people who run like long distances and they drink a lot of fluids um, and they're not replenishing enough electrolytes, too. So it's really important to watch how much water they're taking in That's a good point. and um, and then also how hot they're getting. Because even like if it's above 70, 75, they can get pretty hot quickly. Uh, and heat stress is something that can be life threatening for oh, dogs yeah. and cats. And they are only able to dissipate heat through panting and through the pads of their feet. They don't sweat all over their body like we do. And they're wearing fur coats. Most of them. That's a really good point. We teach that in our pet first aid classes. Dr. Marty Becker is one of my advisors and Dr. Elizabeth Colloran. And I got to tell you, we say it, it's the pause that refresh. And we say, I have a lot of Mutt Giver tips. That's what I call it. So take that spare poop bag if you don't have your pop up water bowl and pour cool water and one paw at a time. And we've got the experts here. We're going to take a quick commercial break in a second. But Dr. Martin, what is the danger? of putting ice or giving a hot dog ice. I always say ice, ice, not nice, baby. When you're trying to cool down a hot dog, why would you not use ice? Why would you use cool water? Well, you don't want to cool them down too quickly. That's the most important thing. It's And then also, you know, it's like a person. You can basically cause frostbite if the ice stayed wow. up on their paws too long. Um, so you want to cool them down gradually. But preventing and basically, if it's 75, and depending on what breed of dog you have, if you have a brachycephalic dog or a short-nosed dog, yeah. they're even more heat intolerant. If you have a, a dark-coated dog, they're going to be more heat intolerant than a short-coated dog. 
And then there's the difficulty of, uh, well, you want to get them cooled off. You want to let them go in the water, especially if they like to swim. But then we're worried about the risk of toxins with the cyanobacteria. Um, yeah. And uh, it's basically like cyanide, uh, essentially, in the water and uh, can be uh, acutely fatal for them. So heat stress is a big problem that yeah. you have to be concerned about. You do want to cool them down gradually. And so that's not going to be using ice, just like you wouldn't put ice on a on an injury that you had. You'd put a towel around it yes. um, with the ice so that you prevent basically temperature burn. Yeah, wouldn't that be ironic? You're in the hot summer of Texas and your dog gets frostbite. That can happen. Hey, guys, we're talking to Dr. Kenneth Martin and Debbie Martin. Together, they uh, represent, well, one's a veterinary behaviorist, one's a licensed veterinary technician with a specialty in behavior. After the show, I want you guys to go to veterinarybehavior.com and also teamanimalbehavior.com. But we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what the heck does stress really do physically and mentally on a dog or a cat. So you guys know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Welcome to spring and summer, the onset of itchy skin and allergy season. Is your pet dealing with itchy skin, hot spots, and even ear infections? Help is here. It is Zymox shampoo and conditioner to the rescue. Not only is this a shampoo and conditioner great for general bathing and healthy skin support, but it is the go-to shampoo and conditioner for itchy pets. Its patented enzyme formula is loaded with antibacterial and antifungal properties to ease the itch and stop the scratching. And as an added bonus, Zymox shampoos and conditioners give off a lovely, pleasant non-medicine smell. For over 20 years, Zymox products have been helping pets find relief for many health conditions. All Zymox skin and ear products get their effectiveness from enzymes. Zymox contains no antibiotics and no petroleum byproducts, just the soothing power of enzymes. Zymox can be found at your veterinary clinic, most pet specialty stores, and online. To learn more, dash over to www.zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X for your pet's sake. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Dr. Marty Becker, and I'm proud to be part of Arden Moore's O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to O Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. If you haven't figured it out already, Dr. Kenneth Martin and Debbie Martin are helping us actually be better pet detectives. In other words, look for some clues by looking, listening, smelling, safely touching, and be able to come up with some clues that show, ah, this isn't normal in my dog or cat, and I need a little help. Fear Free Pets is a game changer. It was created by Dr. Marty Becker and others. And these two are one of the probably the top in the team. I would say you guys would be like captains, wouldn't you think? I'm an ex-sports writer. And we talk about FAS, fear, anxiety, and stress. And you can't say to a dog or a cat, oh, just get over it. It's just, it's nothing. Relax. <laughs> to a dog or a cat is like, ah. So medically, we can't ignore stress, can we? Let's start with Dr. Ken first. I mean, that's something we really need to pay attention. No, it's something that's really common. And we're looking at their behavioral welfare. And uh, it, it's not a good feeling, right? To be afraid, to be anxious, to be stressed, to be angry. Those aren't good emotions. And so we want to address those uh, in pets for their welfare. Because if, if our dogs and cats are happy, you know what? We're happy too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it it is important. So it's something that we look out and look out for always. And uh, initially, it's going to be for a dog or a cat body language. We're looking okay. at body language indicators that indicate they they have some underlying fear, anxiety, stress. Let's give a few from you with the dog, and then we'll have Debbie come in with the cat. So looking at overall body posture. So when dogs are afraid, they're going um, to typically cower, look smaller, leaning away, crouching down, tucking the tail, pinning the ears back flat on the side of the head. 
The okay. pupils dilated, whites of the eyes exposed. Wow. So we're looking at body language, shaking, trembling, avoidance behavior, hiding. All those wow. things are signs of fear, anxiety, and stress. Pretty common ones. Okay. How about you, Deb? Because kitties can be a little yeah. slightly different. Yeah. So cats, they can be very subtle in their body language yeah. and uh, very kind of passive about it too. So things that you often will see, similar to dogs, pupils may dilate. The ears may go back or to the side okay. and down. Uh, and that often causes a flattening of the head. The whiskers may go back or they may go forward. So it's hard oh. to tell. And then um, most of the time cats are going to crouch and bring their feet in close to them. Their tail will be close to them. The tip of the tail may be moving or wagging. Um, if it's twitching or moving quickly, those are signs that they're getting quite agitated. They're speaking a little bit louder. A wagging cat tail is usually not an invitation to be petted. <laughs> I was going to say the relaxed side to side, like a metronome and a dog is maybe okay. But if you have a cat going side to side, isn't that a lash? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like Back cats when they, when they wind their tails, so make a winding motion with it really slow and soft. That can be a friendly greeting up oh, high. Okay. Uh, but if it's close to their body and just the tips moving almost like a rattlesnake, <laughs> Um, then that's usually a sign of agitation, irritation. Yeah. But I was going to add with Dr. Martin's description of dogs too. Oftentimes dogs and cats will cower or try to get away, but even when they're afraid, sometimes they even speak louder and they become more offensive and they will come towards you to try to drive you away if they feel cornered. Okay. So they can look like they're being, you know, really confident and coming at you, but that's fear trying to drive you away. I, I tell people it's like they've taken a good self-defense class and they know how to <laughs> handle themselves to keep themselves safe, but they're right. still scared at the core. They're just offensively taking charge of the situation to keep themselves safe. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, it is, as you can see, fear can be offensive or defensive with aggression. And so with threat behavior, basically distance increasing signal saying, I don't like that. I don't like what's happening. I, you don't belong here. Go away, essentially. And yeah. they can use body language. So, but, but you have to realize the number one motivation for aggression in dogs or cats is fear. Wow. They're afraid or they're anxious. They're worried about that person. They're worried about that, that stimulus that they're reacting to and they're saying, go away. And then learning is a big part of the behavior and that they oftentimes have practice of behavior and they learn that the behavior works or it doesn't work. And then there's personality differences. As some people, if a person broke into your home, you might run away and hide. Um, and then other people might be, no, I'm going to get the broom and I'm going to chase them away. All right. Yeah. You have different MOs to basically go to that can be temperament differences uh, that you can see. And what toll physically can stress do on a dog or a cat? Cortisol levels. Now, cortisol levels increase with stress. It's a stress-related hormone. Um, and essentially, it can weaken the immune system. So chronic stress, chronic anxiety, it's not healthy for dogs, cats, or people. So it's something that we do want to address and we do want to treat to make them better because it's, just, yeah. it's a health problem. How would this show itself, would you say? What would be some common issues, physical ailments that show up that may be stress-induced? Yeah, skin-related problems you know, are pretty common uh, in dogs. Um, GI-related issues, uh, chronic GI problems, uh, just like in people, chronic stress, GI sensitivity. So they may have a dog or cat that they say are finicky or inappetence is, a, is another common one. Yeah. Um, for the most part, dogs and cats aren't stress eaters. So when they're stressed, it's not like the pandemic where we're having the munchies, right? You know, because Right? Pass me the Cheetos! <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the most part, for dogs or cats, if they are stressed or anxious, they're going to be inappetent. Okay. Um, inappetence can be a life-threatening problem for cats. Dogs handle it a little bit better. Okay, so in my household, at mealtime, when I first got Rusty, the performer, he was bananas when it came to meals. He would get up on his haunches and scream, ah, no, 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 and try to steal everybody's food. And I noticed that we had runny stools, we had more vomiting. It was really, I, I was like, um, that's not going to work. So we feed him first in a bathroom with his little floor mat, lights on. And then we dignifyly, if there's such a word, with dignity, we give uh, Mike and Casey their food on cat trees opposite facing. So they're elevated. And then on either side of the kitchen island on the floor, we do the bowls for um, Kona and little Emma. When they're all done, I pick up the bowls, clean them, put them away, open the door and release the maniac. The stools are great. I love talking about poop. Yeah. I love how you 
problem solve that and figure out a way to help make Rusty more successful and yeah. less anxious just by changing the setup and yeah. getting him fed first. And then everyone else who can calmly wait for their food gets their food without craziness going on. Because <laughs> it right. affects them too, obviously. If, if a housemate is excited, and, it can And that's probably anxiety. why he was the circus cat, right? He was very... Yeah, he was like, look at that. <laughs> motivate, yeah. <laughs> well, a couple of times we went to get takeout and we forgot, oh no, Rusty's still in the bathroom. But, and he just sits like a little, um, you know, like a loaf of bread. He's got a little toss tucked. He doesn't scratch the door or anything. And he's like, okay, I'm ready to come out. But he had been crate trained by Samantha Martin and she blew a whistle and he would go on stage, do his things at six months of age and then blew another type of whistle and he would run into his carrier on stage at six Great. months. So I blow the whistle. Now all the pets come. <laughs> <laughs> Observational learning. <laughs> oh, okay. But I think in a way it's good because I hope he never gets outside because he is rewarded every time coming to that whistle. So for a cat, what do you think about training them to a whistle, guys? It's nice having a recall, regardless of what the stimulus is that induces it to where you can call the cat to you, call the dog to you. I mean, it's one of, probably the one of most important cues you could teach a pet. Okay. I like and if it. it got away from you, don't run away from you, but come over to you, right? So you have a way to induce it. Some cats might be afraid of a whistle. Depends on the frequency. Um, some cats can be noise sensitive. Well, I do it with my thing. mouth now because I don't have a whistle around me. Just like with a clicker, I make a more of a <coughs> sound because I don't have a clicker. Uh, I used to have a cat that would come to the Jeopardy theme song tune. <laughs> I'd go, do, 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 do. And Murphy would go, wow, wow, wow. So... <laughs> <laughs> Homage to Alex Trebek. I, I know it's a weird one, but I figured I'd be the only idiot in the neighborhood doing that. And hopefully if Murphy had gotten out, he would know to come to me. Yeah. yeah. Very unique cue is, is important one. <laughs> like We're wrapping this up with Dr. Kenneth Martin and Debbie Martin. And is there any parting tip? You're just, oh, I got to say this to people right now. We'll start with Debbie first. What's a good tip you can give us as we emerge out of the pandemic? Mm. Take things slow and uh, be willing to, if you're out and about with your pet, be willing to end things if they're not having a good time uh, good. and watch for the stress signals. If they don't acclimate and they're not taking treats and not enjoying the interaction, um, be ready to head back home. I think that's really great advice. Sorry, Dr. Kenneth. Now you got to top that good one. Go for it. Don't top it. You guys are married. You're not competitive. You love each other. <laughs> They're shaking their heads. How long have you guys been married? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, that long. means a, a long time. <laughs> 13 years. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Long enough, right? <laughs> All right. What's your take home message, Dr. Ken? I want to say along the same lines, read your pet's body language. It's hard to habituate to things that are scary. So you really have to look at the pet and see how the pet is doing and set them up to be successful just like it was a child. Right. You, you can't just be thrown into a crowd and all of a sudden one day you're fine with it. If every time you're experiencing that, that situation, you're uncomfortable with it. So use treats proactively. Foster a positive emotional state rather than a neutral or negative one is what I would say. Because treats are a stronger classical counter conditioner where they change a negative emotion to a positive one than really praise or attention. Yeah, praise and attention is great too. Uh, a lot of pets like that. Puppy talk, right? Kitten talk. Yeah. Um, all those things can be really enforcing. If you have a tune like you have, I, I used to, with our, our little dog, we had a little Jack Russell Terrier. I used to use the Star Wars theme song. Oh, let's hear you do it. Oh, I can't. I Come on, it's that. radio. Come on. Like, uh, uh, no, no, oh, no, no, you're doing Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's dun, been a long yeah. time. Da, da. There you go. Yeah. It's been a long time, but we used to do that prior to feeding her and she would come over running and be, she was a little circus dog too. Mm -hmm. uh, she would, she only had one eye, um, but little beagle Jack Russell Terrier would dance around on her back legs. was was uh -huh. a lot of fun. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you, because we talk about treats and there seems to be getting a new generation, the lickables. And the, the ones that you throw in a mat, um, what's your take on those guys? Because it can get kind of messy and grimy when you're, you got a little pieces of cut up chicken and your hands all got goo all over them. So what's your take on lickables and the sniffari mats or whatever? Yeah, it depends what you're working on, you know. Uh, so if I want them to spend some time licking something or be distracted with something, I'm going to give them like a lickable, smearable thing on like a licky mat or something like that. 
But if I'm wanting quick repetitions, I want something that they can, you know, take, swallow and be ready for the next one. And it doesn't take them a long time to chew it up. And some dogs and cats, if you use a lickable that like they lick a little bit off and then you take the rest away, some of them can get a little bit upset about that. Oh, really? (laughs) The taking away when they weren't quite finished with it. So Uh um, I've even seen cats, if you were using like canned cat food on a spoon, you give them a lick and then you take it away to start your next repetition with training. And some of those cats... After a couple of repetitions, they're going to grab hold of that spoon and your hand and not let you take it away. So that can induce some anxiety if you're taking the treat away from them. That's why I like something that's small that they can take and swallow and be ready for the next. Okay. And what's your take on lickables, Dr. Ken? I like them. A lot of times I will use uh, canned cheese or Kong stuffing and dogs and cats like it. Uh, Cool Whip, you know, lots of cats and dogs like a little lick of Cool Whip. So all those things could be used. Yeah, we use them often. And it keeps your hands clean, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, on my meow hour, I was doing a drink with whipped cream and I squirted it wrong and it landed on the monitor and Casey and Rusty were like, ah, 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 ah. so everybody <laughs> laughed. But um, yeah, they, they love it when I have whipped cream. Guys, I really appreciate you both being on our show. We're again talking to Dr. Kenneth Martin and Debbie Martin. They know behavior. I want you to dash over to veterinarybehavior.com and teamanimalbehavior.com. And of course, fearfreehappyhomes.com. I hope you guys will come back. I hope it wasn't too torturous for you guys to be on our show. No, it's been a blast. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Hey, we want our pets to be happy and we want them to be healthy. And so I think you shared a lot of great insights. So we appreciate that. We also want to give a shout out to my producer, Mark Winter. He is the wizard of paws, the surgeon of sound. He has been running Pet Life Radio since 2007. We are now the longest continuously running pet podcast on the planet. Oh, behave. Thank you, Mark. He's my radio husband. And uh, he's got a lot of great shows on the Pet Life Radio Network. I want you to check them out. Please check me out at ardenmore.com. And until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.